Don't forget to leave a like and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications directly sent to you for all uploads on the channel. And thank you for the continued support. All right, so what's poppin' everybody? Sacred Fire Negro here, and welcome to another Pokemon discussion video. Now, I know I barely do these things, but this one just kind of hit me. It's like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like going through like channel thoughts, and I'm just like, wait a minute, this could actually make for a perfect video. So I figured with Pokemon Sun and Ultra Moon, well, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon coming out later this year, 2017, and with Pokemon Switch being confirmed for 2018 or later, um... I figured, why don't we talk about some things that could possibly happen within the game. Now, I know it's kind of too early to sit here and say, oh, you don't really know anything about the Pokemon Switch version. There is no details about it at all. But I figured we have a couple of actual uh, games that we can look at that we can actually, um, I guess, use examples of and kind of just add like little attributes here and there. And then also, if you guys want to add on to the discussion, let me know in the comment section below what Pokemon do you or what animals do you want to see Pokemon being made out of? Uh, what region have we yet to go to that you guys would love to see? Um, and let me see what what would, in your opinion, be like the like I guess what what would your ideal story for this Pokemon Switch game be? Because I know a lot of people like the whole like kid childish, barely challenging routes for beginners or whatever, and then some people like the really dark challenging, kind of like how Black and White and Black and White Two was. And then I, I don't know, I'm kind of in the middle of it. I'm a regular casual player. I really don't care too much if it's game if it's hard or not. But I will acknowledge the flaw when it comes to that. But let me know in the comment section below and kind of let's get into it. So now what I was thinking about uh, Pokemon Switch or Pokemon for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I looked at a couple games and I figured let's first of all, let's look at Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Let's upscale that to 1080 60 FPS. Uh, I, I wouldn't imagine. I, I would imagine actually that there would probably be like a lot of load times. Probably not. Depending on certain areas, I'm not sure. Because if you want to do an entire region where everything's kind of like real time. Kind of like how Breath of the Wild was. Where everything, every village had like certain real time events. The world was actually real time and you had to go through it. Um, I feel like that would be a really, 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 really good thing. But kind of knowing how Game Freak is and how lazy they are. Um, I think it'd be safe to say that there will be load times in the game. Kind of like how XD had uh, those little scenarios where you were going through certain uh, towns. And it would show like the little cameo of your character actually going through uh, these like specific like route, whether it's a desert or the trees or whatever, and then it fades to black. Now, I don't want to be that guy and try to rain on somebody's parade, but we can have high expectations for this game, or we could just sit there and just be like, uh, yeah, it's not going to be that good. Because yeah, think about it Game Freak is actually a lot lazier than, you know, we give them credit for, or we barely let them go slide for or whatever because in the past they've messed up was that they messed up a lot of like evolutions they messed up a lot of uh regions uh even six gen six gen is a prime example of pretty much starting a storyline and then not even finishing it in the rest of the games you know everybody when zygarde came out they were like oh hey uh zygarde's gonna have like, a humongous story and then turns out oh hey here are these different forms in sun and moon that you really can't do anything with besides collect them it's like all right that that's great so let's not ignore the fact that game freak is lazy let's not do that but let's talk about you know the region itself what would you guys like the region to be honestly if we're talking like with how everything is now like kind of how like mario odyssey mario odyssey's world portrayed itself kind of like how uh breath of the wild's world uh portrayed itself i would imagine the game actually being really 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 huge i just i, I can't I can't sit here and tell you like, oh, hey, the specific how many like towns there's going to be or how many times I want there to be. If anything, I would probably want maybe, I don't know, do we really want a traditional Pokemon game? Do we really want like the eight gym badges, the evil uh, team or whatever coming around like the seventh and then pretty much beating up the Elite Four or whatever? I kind of want like an actual story. If I'm being really honest with you, I want like an actual story. Kind of like how XD and Coliseum were. Now, I know I keep mentioning them. And I know their spinoff games, Game Freak only handles the main series, but I figured, you know, since you have to remember that people are actually betting on Nintendo and Game Freak ditching the 3DS next year, and then they just completely come through over here on the Switch. Now, my question is, would you rather follow the same traditional formula as long as it just looks aesthetically pleasing, or would you rather them switch it up 
and actually have like an actual story with these games to come. You know, you never know. Um, if anything, like I said, I probably want like a different twist on everything, kind of like how XD and Coliseum was, where you know you have your character, you have, you're starting off in the new uh, region, your family's there, your professor's there, you meet some friends along the way. I'd actually really want to have a really developed story when it comes to this. Um, I can see it now, like maybe uh, have like your main character not talk per se, but you know, like maybe have like your main character have like your three rivals or your two rivals. And then you all go through the game together and they progress kind of like how in X and Y, how like Shauna and Serena actually progressed uh, as characters. But, you know, no, nobody ever really paid attention to them. But like, I mean, like, if anything, probably just go through that, probably have like a plot twist where like one of your friends betrays you. Uh, the evil villains like a higher up and like, let's say like a political view or whatever, like he has actual power, not just. Like, kind of like how Giovanni is, how he's like the 8th gym badge, or how he's the 8th gym leader. He's the uh, also the owner of the casino. He's also the owner of Team Rocket. Kind of like how that is, where it's like he's like the mastermind behind this, like, pyramid scheme. I would love to see that return again, honestly, because, real talk, the past couple of, like, evildoers, honestly, have all been kind of just, like, really crazy. And I get it. The only one that was actually really able to pull off the crazy stunts were pretty much Getsis, Lysander, Cyrus, and... I can't help but think about it. You know, what if we have like a new, a new um villain that actually like I guess replicates Giovanni in a sense. Where like I said, there's a pyramid scheme. He's at the top of it, and he kind of just foresees everything. And you have to like go through all these spots to basically break through over there to him. And then meanwhile, while that's going on, he has like you know Pokemon has to have the gimmicks. So let's say uh, for for example, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, Shadow Pokemon, kind of like how Shadow Pokemon, where it was like, oh god, where did Shadow Pokemon come from? Then you find out it's Cypher, and it's like, holy crap, wait a minute, and you basically go through these different towns, basically going up to the final boss with Cypher. So it'd be like, whatever gimmick that they're introducing in that generation, uh, the evil guy, his pyramid scheme, you breaking down that pyramid, and I don't know if you want to do the traditional thing, you could. Honestly, I feel like with the big game, that's expected out of Pokemon Switch. I would much rather not, but I can definitely see where they, where they can like mix it both. You know, like Breath of the Wild world is like really huge, right? And it's a lot of like upscaled uh, models and big ass figures and stuff like that. And that's cool, you know. But imagine like maybe, maybe let's say 10 to like 11 uh, towns. Where there's like maybe eight of them that actually have gym badges and the rest of them are kind of just filler. Kind of like how uh, in third gen there was that, it was Flannery's home. Like what was that, Fleur Arbor Town or, I forgot what it was called. I forgot what it was called, but it was right next to the meteorite guy. Imagine like a lot of those towns where it's kind of filler. Where it's like, oh hey, you can go up in there, some character progression comes. You can catch some type of Pokemon there. You can do whatever you want. Um, and then that'd be it. I, I would, I would rather that if I'm being honest with you, um, in terms of Pokemon that we haven't seen before, uh, probably have like another bird that we haven't seen yet be, uh, made into a Pokemon, probably have like, uh, obviously some mammals going on, some returning mammals probably wouldn't, you know, some returning mammals, but like a lot of redesigns, kind of like how like Tauros and Bufalant are there. And then let's say, or like Miltank or whatever, and they just kind of just redesign what they are, so they're like pretty much the same species, just redesigned different Pokemon names, different typings also. Um, I really want a dolphin Pokemon, but that's that's literally going against what I was. Well, I may as well, we're here, may, may as well. But um, what was that? I, we still haven't gotten a actual. Um, well, I feel like that is going really too deep into like RPG territory, or, like real like in depth RPG territory. Because I was thinking about like some actual like. Uh, angelic deities, kind of like how um, in Persona 5, how there's like, you know, some, some, uh, what's the word, some, not, what's that, Persona, some shadows uh, that look like some deities or some like ancient uh, monsters or whatever that actually, kind of like how um, Coffer Grigus is, more like inanimate objects, more um, spirits, you know, kind of want to have that be like a, not a center focus, but more that be what. I guess the appeal is, you know, that wide and variety of Pokédex. I feel like, what's that? What, what is that? That's six through eighth gen, no, six through seventh gen. It's kind of just been like a small Pokédex 
edition. You know, they had like the real, like the 62 new Pokemon and the rest of the Pokemon were like Megas and Alolan forms to basically fill up the decks. You know, I don't want to be that guy, but I don't know if you guys are fans of the gimmicks. Let me know in the comment section. I'm not really a fan of the gimmicks. If I'm being really honest with you, I don't like the gimmicks. I feel like the gimmicks kind of ruin everything. I feel like the experience itself is kind of whack because, like I said, 6th Gen really did ruin the whole gimmick idea for me because we can sit here and talk about, like, Pokemon for the Switch. We can talk about how big the world is going to be, uh, the evil guy. Let's talk about the pyramid scheme. But it all comes down to the gimmick itself. I don't understand. Pokemon for the past, like, a couple of years, actually, have been going off of this, like, gimmick. It's been this thing where it's like, oh, hey, I think back in 4th Gen, that was pretty much it, where it was, like, the only thing that they had there was, like, new evolutions and certain items that you could pretty much get to those evolutions. 5th Gen had, like, a lot of new Pokemon. I don't think 5th Gen had any gimmicks. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section. I'm not sure, but then 6th Gen had Mega Evolutions. 7th Gen had a Lolan Forms and Z moves also. But I don't know. Would you guys, are you guys fans of the gimmicks? I feel like as long as the gimmick kind of like adds on to the story or pretty much kind of just, I don't know, doesn't ruin the story too much because sometimes it kind of like comes off as mad corny. And I feel like I'm expecting Pokemon or Game Freak to pretty much come out of nowhere and be like, oh, hey, here is an, a, not an adult, but more a more subtle but mature type of game you know with me playing all these rpgs recently i've kind of just been looking at pokemon like what could they add on to make this like even more immersive for the older players the older audience and then the newer guys and i figured you know why not um i figured why not you know take some very like take some big risk you know like we all like i said we always have these gimmicks we always talk about like the regular traditional stuff that Pokemon always does. But my question is, with everybody saying Pokemon is getting so stale, would you guys enjoy those gimmicks? Now, me personally, honestly, I'm a fan of humongous story and huge decks. Honestly, I love new Pokemon. Whenever we get new Pokemon, you can go back and watch you can go back and watch the Coral Coral Scan videos back when uh, the past like three or four games came out whenever we got new Pokemon. I was actually genuinely excited I love new Pokemon. I absolutely love new Pokemon I like new Pokemon that we haven't seen before I like coming back to a species and pretty much adding on or redesigning them I like that. I like when Pokemon does that. I like that right then we have story now me I'm a humongous RPG fan. I love Pokemon but at the same time I can understand that compared to a lot of other uh rpgs kind of like how persona's there um uh the shimigami tente series is there uh dragon quest is there who else am i missing a lot of rpgs can be put into this category you know a lot of rpgs have that really dark and serious tone and don't get me wrong pokemon is serious pokemon gets to a point where it's like oh hey the world's about to end but it's like there's pacing to that that kind of ruins it for me like, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I know everybody can sit here and let me know in the comment section below. Pokemon has gotten stale to them at one point. I don't care what anybody says. Literally, I want you to know, I've seen so many people on YouTube comments and everything like that say Pokemon is dead. Pokemon is drying out. Pokemon is stale. And I mean, I understand that because, you know, you get, you get fed the same thing over and over again, you know? So my question is, obviously, we have the new Pokemon. We have the big, humongous region. Like I said, let's do like 11 towns. Eight of them actually have gyms. The other ones are more like filler, stationary spots. Kind of like how pit stops are. Um, and let's talk about like the story. I, honestly, the story, the story is pretty much, I feel like going to be everybody's, you know, big thing when it comes to Pokemon Switch or Pokemon for the Nintendo Switch because, like I said, we can sit here and gas this stuff up, but I would hate to see the same people rooting for this game be the same people that were talking about how bad the game died or how fast the game died or how lacking the game was. I mean, like, literally, let me know in the comment section below. What do you guys expect from this game? What do you guys want to see in this game? Let it be new or old from older games, from newer games, most recent. You know, let me know what, at, what, what things do you guys want to see that can make this game probably one of the better games in the series because if everybody is you know betting on nintendo and game freak ditching the handheld consoles and we move over to switch completely 
Let me know, like, what can they do or what do you think they can do to make this, I guess, transition to the final and home console for everybody for Nintendo this year um, or next year or the years to come. Uh, let me know what they can do to basically make it like better, make it the best game that it could be. Um, that's it gonna be. That's gonna be for me. I was just here, kind of just rambling. Like I said, it's like five o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. I apologize for holding you guys so long, but hopefully this like kind of triggered like some thoughts in your head, and you think about it like, yo, like maybe th he's right. Maybe this is what Game Freak is doing. Because like I said, I don't want to be that guy and hype up these games and make up you know rumors and speculations and have all these people you know be so excited just to have the games released or the games to be showcased and everybody's disappointed let me know in the comment section your thoughts and opinions i will talk to you guys later give it a thumbs up subscribe if you guys are new and i will definitely talk to you guys later bye